Hey, what's going on guys? I got a really cool project for you today using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we're going to be building a split screen slider, I guess you would call it. And this was actually inspired by the Corsair website, which I'll show you in a second. But basically we have this page where we have two different images and we have some text on two different layers, two different um, HTML layers. And if we hover over it, we can actually switch from one layer to another. We can make this sliding effect, which is really cool. And we have two different images. Now, these images are copywritten, so when you get the code, it'll look like this. I'm just using some uh, images of some circles. So you can replace that with whatever you want, but I can't use those, those Corsair images. If you want to use them to test out, um, of course, you, you can't use them you know, on a website or anything like that. But if we just search for Corsair, 600t which is an awesome case i own one it's really nice um, these two images right here are what i used okay so they're basically the same size they're just different colors so if you want to grab those and, and use them to test that's fine just know that they're not stock images and you can't use them uh, anywhere all right so this is the corsair website where i got the idea now of course i didn't just grab the code or anything like that i looked at it and i rebuilt it in my own way but uh, I thought it was really cool so I wanted to make a video on it all right and the way that we're doing this is really by CSS is using the CSS transform property and using skewed so if we get, if we search for CSS transform you'll see that uh, we can do like rotations and scaling and stuff like that but if we look at skew it'll just basically you know twist it how we want it so 30 degrees uh, we could do that, and if we want it to go the other way, we can do negative 30 degrees. So that's what we're going to do with the handle, which is this this yellow part in the middle. All right, and then we'll add the JavaScript to have uh, to create the mouse event to kind of follow the the cursor and um, you know move it where we want. So that's what we'll be doing, guys. I thought it was a pretty cool project, so hopefully you enjoy it, and let's get started. So if you guys really enjoy my content, you feel like you really get something out of it, consider becoming a patron to push me to keep bringing you high quality educational videos. Showing your support with even $1 means the world. We have different perks and tiers, including a $2 tier that'll give you every Udemy course that I release absolutely free. To learn more, check out patreon.com slash Traversy Media. All right, guys, so we're going to get started. Now, the first thing I want to take care of is the images. OK, so I have a blank folder here called split screen. This is where we're going to create our project. And I'm going to create a folder here called IMG. And if you want to get these these um, PC images, if you just search for Corsair 600 T, it's these two images here. So this one you want to view image and save it as PC one and then this one view image save it as pc2 okay or you can just you can well yeah just do it that way because i'm not going to be including these images in the actual files but i'm going to bring them down here okay so i'm also going to bring down the uh just the placeholder images so these are the two that will be included in the actual project if you download it okay these will not be these are copywritten you do not want to use these in any kind of website or um, you know application or anything like that just for testing all right so now that we have our IMG folder let's go ahead and get rid of that and let's um, let's go to Visual Studio Code and I already have the split screen uh, let's see I don't want this to be too small I already have the split screen folder open and we have our IMG folder so let's create the rest of our files so we want an index.html Let's also create a CSS folder with a style sheet in it. We'll call this style.css. And then let's also create a JS folder. And we'll create a file called main.js. All right. And let's open up our index page. And we're going to get started with the HTML, which is pretty simple. So we're going to go ahead and just add in our base body tags. I'm using Emmet. So I'm going to do exclamation control and let's change this title. We'll just say split screen, uh, split screen slider, I guess. And we're going to include our CSS file. So let's say uh, link. If you're using Emmet, you can just do link uh, tab 
and we're going to just put in here CSS slash style dot CSS. And let's see down here in the body. Let's just include our JavaScript. So we'll put in a script tag with a source to JS slash main dot JS. All right. So now we have all of our files linked. I'm going to save this now. Of course, you can just open it on your file system if you want. But I use a, a plugin called Live Server. If you want that, you can just click on the extensions icon, search for it and just install it. All right. Once you do that, you can just go on the HTML file and right click and you can say open with Live Server and that'll open it on your local host. Okay, and it's auto reload, so you won't have to keep uh, keep reloading it. All right, so let's get started on our HTML. So inside the body here, I'm going to create a section tag and I'm going to give it an ID of wrapper. I'm also going to give it a class of skewed. Okay, is that how you spell it? Yeah, skewed. Okay, so we have our, our main section. Everything's going to go in here. Now we're basically going to have two layers. We're going to have a, a top layer and a bottom layer. Okay, so the bottom, I should probably open up the project. Um, yeah, let's do that real quick. All right. And you'll see this is actually pretty responsive too. in a small screen like this. It still works well. Um, but basically the bottom layer is going to be the black and then the top will be the gray. All right. So we need to create those two divs. So let's create a div with the class of layer. And we're also going to give it a class of bottom. Okay. Uh, and then in here, we're going to have basically two more divs. We're going to have a, a content wrap and a content body that's going to go around the um, the text. So let's say content dash wrap and then content dash body. All right. And then we're going to have an H1 in here and we're going to say look sharp. And then let's put a paragraph and I'm going to say lorem 20 tab, which will just give us 20 words of, of sample text. All right. And then we just want the image. Uh, we want the image to go under the content body. So it'll go right here. So I'm going to just put in an image and let's let's bring this to PC one dot PNG. OK, in your if you're downloading the, the files fr from the description, it'll be image one PNG, which will be the circle. All right. So let's go ahead and save that. And this is what it's going to look like. Uh, let's see. Oh, I forgot the IMG. There we go. All right. So it should look like this so far. I'm actually going to close that and then make this a little bigger. All right. And then what we need to do is, is basically the same thing we just did. We want another layer. So we'll just copy this div right here. And we'll go ahead and paste that in. And then we're just going to change this class to top. OK, so this will be the top layer and we'll change the heading here to stay cool and we'll leave the same text. That's fine. And let's change the image to PC2. All right. So we'll save it and it's going to look like this. So now what I want to do is just add the handle. OK, so we need a div to represent the middle, this middle part here, which is the handle. So that's actually going to go right uh, right above the ending section tag. So we'll just put a class here of handle. And that's it. That's our HTML. It's as easy as that. So now we're going to move to our CSS. OK, so this is where most of our work is going to go. Let's start off with just some body um, styles. So for the body, we're going to zero out the margin and padding. All right. So next thing we want to add is the font size. We're going to say we want that to be 100 percent and we want the line height uh, to be, let's say, 1.6 and then the font family. I'm going to set that. Um, to Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif. All right, so that's the body. Next, we're going to do the wrapper. OK, so that's the section that wraps around everything. And we're going to set that position to relative. And let's set the width of 100 percent. So it should cover everything. And then we're going to set the min height. 
So min height, I'm going to set this to 55 VW. So for those of you that don't know, VW is a CSS unit. It's viewport width. And it's basically if you take the width, sorry about that. If you take the width of the browser window and you slice it into 100 different um you know, 100 different slices, we're taking 55 of that. And then we're setting that to the height, not the width. All right. So if we look at the original script here, and we were to extend this, you'll see that the height changes depending on the width. And that's what that's what I want. All right. And if I make it, you know, full size, it looks really nice. So I think 55 is a good Jesus. Let me just put this on vibrate, guys. Sorry about that. So um, yeah, we want to set that to 55 with the 55 viewport width. All right, and we're going to set a, uh, the, the actual layer to the same thing. So for the wrapper, the last thing I want to add is the overflow. And we're going to set that to hidden. All right, so now we're going to do the layer class of layer. So both the top and bottom images or not images, but I guess the content areas have a class of layer. One has bottom, one is top. The black is the bottom. The white is the top. Or I should say the gray. So for layer, we're going to set the position to absolute. OK, so you want to make sure the wrapper is relative, but the layer inside of it is actually absolute. And then we're going to set the width. Uh, of the layer, not to 100%, but to 100 viewport widths. Okay, viewport widths, VW, because we want it to extend all the way across. We want to take up all 100 slices. And then the min height is going to be the same as the as the wrapper. It's going to be 55 VW. Okay, and then we're also going to set the overflow to hidden. All right, so that's the layer. Um, next thing we're going to do is the uh, the content wrap, which is around the H1 and it's around the content body. If we look at the HTML, so the content wrap and then we have in the that inside of that the content body. So let's say layer content wrap. OK, and then we're going to set the position of that also to absolute. And let's set the width. We're going to set the width to 100 VWs. And we're going to set the min height. We're going to set that to 55 VWs. And we're going to set the. Let's see. Well, we're going to initially set the color of the text to white. Actually, let's not do that just yet just so we can see it. So let's save and it should look like this so far, which looks very awful, but it's going to change. So now what we want to do is the content body, which is inside of the content wrap. So content dash body. All right. And we're going to set the width of that to 25%. OK, and we're going to set the position to absolute. And then we're going to set from the top 50%. So we want to push it down 50%. All right. And then let's set the text align. We'll set that to center. All right. So let's see. We also want to just add in a, a transform property to move the to move the text up a little. So we're going to say transform and then we're going to set translate y because we want to translate on the y axis and we want to move it up a little so it's going to be uh, negative 50%. Okay. Now we're going to do the image. So we're going to say layer img. Just bring this up a little. And for the image it's going to have a uh, first of all it's going to be positioned absolute. Okay, we want to set the width of the image to 35 percent. Let's go ahead and save that. So it should look like that. And let's see, we want it in the middle. So we're going to say from the top, we want it to go 50 percent. And then from the uh, left, 
we want it to go 50%. So let's save that. Um, and then we're also going to add the translate, uh, transform, translate. So transform, set it to uh, tr um, just translate for X and Y is going to be both negative 50%. So negative 50%. Whoops. Save that. And that puts it right in the middle. All right. So I just want to change the heading sizes. So we'll say dot layer H1. And I want to set the size of those to um, 2M. OK. And then we're going to work on the bottom and top. OK, remember the black, that's, that's the bottom, that's the top. So for the bottom, we're going to set the background to 222, two, two, which is a very whoop, is a very dark gray, almost black. All right, so if we save that. Now the the gray or the white, which is the top, we want that to go over the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the Z index here. So Z dash index to one. And then when we do the top, we're going to set the Z index to two, which will bring it bring it more forward. OK, that's what Z index does. It's basically the placement of, you know, what's in front, what's in back. All right. So let's see the content body for the bottom, which is the text. We want that to go over here. OK, if we look, you'll see that the text is on that side. So what we'll do is we'll take the bottom class and say dot content body. And we're going to set that to uh, for be from the right 5% and save. OK, now for the text, we want that to be white, obviously. So um, let's set the initial color to white. So we'll go to the content body and say color white. There we go. And let's see what else. Now the bottom H1. When I say bottom, I mean this this whole area. I want the H1 to be that yellow color. So we'll say dot bottom H1. And we're going to set the color. It's going to be a hexadecimal value of FDA. It's going to be uh, FDA B00. Save that. And now the, the heading is yellow. All right, so that's it for the bottom. Now let's do the top. So we'll say dot top. And let's set um, the background color. We're going to set it to a really light gray. So it's going to be triple E. And we're going to set the why does it do that? We're going to set the color of the text to triple two. And then remember, I said for the Z index, we want to set that to two. So it goes over. And we're going to set the width to uh, 50 VW, so 50 viewport widths. All right, so if we save that, you'll see that it's basically split in half. OK, I set that's I set the width to 50, so it takes up 50 of the 100 slices. And that actually looks pretty cool, split in half like that. So if you guys even wanted to just use something like this in your CSS, that'd be that's pretty cool. Uh, all right, so for the content body right here, we want to do two things. We want to move it over a little. So we're going to say from the left, we want to go 5% over. We also want to change the color. So let's say dot top. And we want to style the content body. So we're going to say from the left, go over 5%. And then for the color is going to be triple two. All right, we'll save that. And there we go. So it looks pretty cool. All right, so now we're going to start to style the handle and um, we're going to make that skew effect. OK, so the handle is basically just a div at the bottom here. OK, we're doing everything in CSS. So let's say dot handle. OK, and for this, we're going to position this to be absolute and we want to set the height. I want to set the height of it to 100 percent. OK, we also want it to be displayed as a block. 
and we're going to set the background color. Let's set the background color to that yellow, which is this right here. All right, and we're going to set the width to five pixels. So that's the width of the yellow bar. All right, and then we want the position to be from the top zero. And we want from the left, we want it to be halfway through, so 50%. Okay, and then the Z index for this, we're actually going to set to three because it should be on top of both. All right, save that. And there we go. Now we have an, a nice little yellow line in the middle. Okay, so now we want to deal with the skew. We want it to go, you know, sideways. And I showed you that the translate, uh, I'm sorry, the transform skew property, we can do that in CSS. It's kind of advanced. Um, I am planning on doing an advanced CSS course, crash course, on YouTube soon, and it will have stuff like this. But don't worry about it if you don't understand every single line. But basically, we're going to take the skewed class and we want the handle. Okay, so skewed and handle, and then we're going to set from top. Uh, top, we're going to say 50%. Okay, and then we're going to set the transform. And we're going to set rotate. And we want to set that to 30 degrees, so th uh, 30 DEG. And then we're also going to set translate Y. And we're going to set that to negative 50%. All right, so let's save that. And it's going to give us that slant. All right, so now what I want to do is set the height. I'm going to set the height to uh, 200%. So it's going to go, you know, all the way across the whole thing. Um, and since it's diagonal, we had to increase the height. And then we want to set the transform origin. So transform dash origin, we're going to set that to top. Okay, so now it's in the middle like that. So now we want to handle the top class, which is the gray. So we're going to say dot skewed and dot top. And we're going to set the transform. Let's set that to skew. And we're going to set it to negative 30 degrees. Save that. Okay, so that looks kind of weird. Um, now we're going to set the margin left. And we're actually going to set that to negative 1000 pixels. Okay, so we'll save that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the width here and we're going to use the calc function. Okay, so we can actually do a calculation here and we're going to take the 50 uh, viewport widths and then we're going to add that 1000 pixels. All right, save that and it should look like that. Okay, so right now we just have we don't we don't see the, the actual content wrap. Okay, the text. So we want to add that. So down here, we're going to say skewed top, and then we want the content wrap, right? Which has the H1 and the paragraph and the content body. And we're going to say uh, transform, and then we want to also set skew on that, and we want to set that to 30 degrees. Okay, and then we'll set our margin left to 1000 pixels and save and there we go so that looks pretty cool even without javascript that looks cool and then the last thing i want to do is if it gets too small I want, this is responsive so if it gets too small uh, i want the text to be i want to um, decrease the text the size of the text so what we'll do is add a little media query in here we'll say at media and let's say for for screen sizes that are less than 768 so we'll say max width 768 pixels then um, we want to set the body text or font size remember we initially set it to hundred percent we just want to set it to 75 percent all right we'll save okay so that makes it a little more responsive 
cool. All right, so that's it for the CSS. Now we're going to add the JavaScript. All right, so let's go ahead and go into our main JS. And first thing we want to do is basically wait for um, the content to load or wait for the page to load. So we're going to add onto the document. We're going to add an event listener by saying add event listener. And we're going to pass in here. Uh, what we're waiting for is DOM content loaded. OK, so when the DOM loads, basically, we're saying um, and then we're going to run a function. OK, and we're going to just create some variables here. We want our wrapper. We can set we can get that with document dot get element by D. OK, it has an ID of wrapper. And then we're going to set the top or to, yeah, top layer and we'll set that to our wrapper. And then we want to do query selector. OK, so basically query selector works like jQuery. We can put anything in here, IDs, tags, whatever we want. We're going to grab the class of top. OK, and we're going to put that into a variable called top layer. And this query selector, you don't have to just you don't you don't have to use this on document. You can use it wherever you want. In this case, we're using it on the wrapper. So any class of top that's inside the wrapper, we're going to grab. All right. And then we also want the handle. All right. So we'll say handle. And again, we're going to use wrapper dot query selector. And we want to get the class of handle. OK, and then I'm going to set two more variables. One is going to be skew. And we're going to set that to zero. And then one is going to be delta. And we're going to set that to zero. All right. And then down here, what we want to do is we want to test to see if um, if wrapper has a, a class of skewed. OK, if it does, we want to set a, we want to set this skew variable to 1000 because remember, it's a thousand pixels. So we want to match that. OK, so let's say uh, if wrapper dot and then we're going to get say class name. So if wrapper dot class name dot index of skewed. OK, because remember, we have that skewed class in here right here. So we're looking for that. Um, so if that is not equal to negative one, because if it's not found, it'll actually be equal to negative one. So we want to make sure it's not equal to negative one. And then we're going to set the skew variable to 1000. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. Now we're not going to see anything yet because we hadn't we haven't added our mouse move event. So that's what we're going to do now. So let's say wrapper dot add event listener. And we want to listen for a mouse move which just means any time that the mouse is being moved inside that element. And then we're going to run a function. All right. So in this in this the parameters of this function, we're going to pass in an event parameter. All right. And then we want to get the delta or the position between the mouse and the center point. So we can do that by setting Let's set the delta variable to uh, the event dot client X. And let me just show actually, let's just show you real quick that you can you can grab the position of the mouse. If we say console dot log and we say E dot client X, let's go ahead and save that and let's open up a console F12 and you'll see wherever I move, it's going to track my mouse. It's going to track the X position. We can also do uh, client Y to get it on to get the Y axis position. All right. But notice if I move from the side, it'll start over here at zero and it'll keep going and it'll keep going up. If we did client Y, it would do the same thing, but going down. So what we want to do here is we want to take this variable and we want to set it to the client X and then we want to take away the window okay, from the main window object. There's a property called inner width. OK, so we want to say window dot inner width and we want to divide that by two 
and then we want to multiply that by zero point by half by 0 0.5 all right so let's save that still not going to do anything um, what we want to do now is move the handle so we want to take that handle variable and we want to say style dot left okay using this dot style we can change any CSS properties we want in this case we're changing the left property and we're gonna set it to the, the client X so e dot client X plus that Delta and then we just want to add on pixels or concatenate PX so it knows that it's pixels all right so we'll save that uh, handle is not defined why is handle not defined we have let handle equals wrapper dot query selector handle um, did I have a spelling mistake here div class handle that's kind of weird Handle is not defined. Oh, you know what I did? <laughs> All of everything we're doing down here should be within this function right here. This is not right. So this should actually be within this function. Sorry about that. All right. So now if I save, there we go. All right. So now the handle is moving just fine. It's doing what it's supposed to. So. We want to do one more thing here. We want to adjust the top panel width to go along with this handle. So we're going to take that top layer, right? And we're going to set the start the width so we can say dot style dot width. And we want to set that to E dot client X. Okay, so the mouse position of the X axis. And then we just want to add that skew variable, which is 1000. And then we want to add on that delta variable which is um, this right here this formula and then we just want to add the pixels we want to concatenate px like that all right so we'll save it and there we go so now the width is adjusting along with the handle now if you want the effect like if we look at um i don't have it open anymore corsair but the corsair site didn't have one single yellow bar like that it kind of had two separate ones um, but what you could do is you could set this to something different like 990 like set it off an offset of 10 pixels and now you can see that it kind of offsets the yellow uh, the yellow bar so you may like that that kind of effect if you want to do that but I like I like having it be just a single yellow bar all right so that's it guys hopefully you enjoyed this project I think it's something that's pretty cool and, and pretty rare um, there's not much JavaScript at all. I know the formula here, the stuff, math, and is kind of confusing. At least for me, I, I hate math. I've always been horrible at math. Um, but this, if if you don't if you don't have any issues with math, this should be pretty easy to understand. All right. Um, but most of the work was in the CSS. Okay, and and the transform property is very very powerful. So I would suggest looking at that more. Uh, we're going to look at that in the advanced CSS crash course whenever I get around to it. All right, so that's it, guys. Hope you liked it. Please leave a like. Please subscribe if you're not. If you like projects like this, I would suggest staying subscribed. And that's it. I will see you next time.